and turn it on on BBC Radio Bristol. Going to the zoo, zoo, zoo. How about you? You, you, you can come too, too, too. We're going to the zoo. Think about it though. Going to a zoo, and they always use the conservation argument, but the other argument is wild animals kept on display for your oohs and your ahs. Is that okay? Safari parks, are they okay? Dogs doing tricks at crafts, running through hoops and running through little sort of, I don't know, tunnels made out of fabric, that okay? What about going to the circus and seeing horses perform? Or llamas perform? Or zebras perform? Or dogs and cats to perform? What about the whole principles of animals being used for your pleasure? Many are unhappy about it, but actually most of us just accept it because that's the way that it is. Three horses last week uh, were killed at Aintree. People went to Aintree to watch horses run around a track and put money on it. Pleasure. Is it okay? Is that, a f is that a good thing to do? Or actually, indeed, the argument goes, well, they're bred for it, and this is what we've always done. Should animals be used for your entertainment? 08000 855 The reason we're talking about this is Circus Mondeo. It's in Canesham until this Sunday. They use horses, goats, llamas, camels. They take animal welfare very seriously. They're regulated by DEFRA. According to DEFRA, there are some 19 wild animals used in circuses, and that's due to be banned from next year. Should animals be used for your entertainment? 08000 855 949. Let's speak to Adrian in Clifton. Morning, Clifton Wood. I beg your pardon, Adrian. Good morning to you. Good morning, John. And also George in Bishopston. George, morning to you. Hey, morning. Thanks for having me on. No problem at all. Adrian, should animals be used for our entertainment? For your entertainment? I think, I think that's a very divisive question. It depends on how and under what circumstances. Um, I think under some circumstances, it's great. Under others, it's not. I mean, I would certainly not condemn a circus out of hand, but I would condemn the use of wild animals, and I would need to know how the welfare of the animals was, was, was constructed. I have no basic objection to um, using animals' entertainment. We eat them. We have a relationship with animals. Our responsibility is to do that responsibly with very, very high welfare standards. But I, as far as your basic question goes, um, I don't have a problem with that. You, you, you said, sorry, 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 to interrupt, sorry to interrupt you, Adrian. Yeah. Uh, you, you said wild animals. Now, I don't know Circus Mondeo, which is governed by uh, DEFRA regulations, subject to inspection, subject to licensing. Um, I don't know whether the llamas are wild or whether these are llamas that were bred in that cat cat captivity. What do we mean by a wild animal, Adrian? You're a vet. Uh, well, I mean wild as opposed to domestic. I, a domestic animal is an animal which has had a relationship with man over many decades okay. and centuries. Um, uh, I, I would I would probably classify a llama as a domestic animal, um, but um, obviously I would not be happy if a llama was captured in the wild and used. Okay, Adrian, stay there. George in Bishopston, should we be using animals for entertainment? I mean, we have done it for centuries, and we have, as Adrian says, a relationship with animals uh, that goes back for, well, millennia. Well, this argument there would be known as what's called an appeal to tradition. So the idea that just because something has been happening for a long time, that makes it okay. Actually, many of the largest scale oppressions in history took place over hundreds uh, of years. And, you know, we can't condone it just because of that. And I think it's the epitome of um, human entitlement that, you know, even though we share this planet with these sentient beings, that we think they're here for us rather than with us. And that's the, the point that we're trying to get across as animal rights activists, that animals are here with us, they're not here for us. Adrian, that's a fair argument, isn't it? That, that we live with pets and dogs and cats, we care for them. That's the principle of the purpose and, and they are with us, not for us, Adrian, as a vet. As, as, uh, absolutely, absolutely. And again, I come back and say, um, we, uh, we, we have a responsibility to them, but that is not an equal situation. We're the top predator, so we have a responsibility to behave well with animals. But if you take it, a very uh, take it a long way like the animal rights people want to take it um we uh, there will be no animals because um we're a pretty um nasty lot 
And um, if they, if they, we didn't have this relationship with animals, racing them, um, uh, you know, there, there are various levels of, of using animals for yes. our entertainment. Um, if we didn't have this relationship, the animals simply wouldn't be there. Uh, George in Bishopston, um, that, that's the point that racehorses are bred to race, uh, greyhounds are bred to, to run, uh, animals are bred to be eaten or used in entertainment, and if we didn't do it, they wouldn't exist, George. Yeah, well, I don't think that it's our right to dictate a purpose for someone else's life. And note how I use that word, someone, there, rather than something. I think we've been very much conditioned to see animals as things, as objects, here to serve us, in a way. And animals are someone, they're a sentient. They have thoughts and feelings and emotions and personalities in the same way as we do. And I don't think we can justify continuing to use them um, in any way, shape or form when we don't need to. And as Adrian just mentioned a moment ago that, you know, we're the, the top predator or whatever it is. But the, the point is we can live without harming animals, exploiting them in any way at all. So if we can rule the world with compassion, with peace, why would we cho not choose to do that? Why would we want to rule with, with greed and with, with a corporate ideology like that? Adrian? <laughs> I don't know about corporate ideology and greed, but with respect, I have spent decades of my career um, committed to the welfare of animals, so I think I'm entitled to hold an opinion here. Just to give you an example, I used to work with racing greyhounds, and um, you take uh, greyhounds, they put them in the van because they're going to the race. My golly, they're like, they're like a dog going for a walk on speed. <laughs> it's, uh, they're, they're leaping around, they're barking, they love it. Uh, and I think we do have to appreciate that under, uh, under many circumstances, animals get as much enjoyment out of this so-called human entertainment as we do. George, I'll let you come back on that before I let you both go. Yeah, um, I mean, imagine if we were to say this sort of thing about dog fighting, though. Imagine if we were to use these same arguments. We said, well, this breed of dog might not exist if we didn't breed them for dog fighting and for people's entertainment. And then we said, you know, but before the fight, you know, the dogs are really raring to go. They really want to go for the other dog. They love it. It's what not. they do. No, no. Every they are though in the in the dog fighting industry. Any do any person in a dog fighting racket would say that they would use that exact argument. Uh, we'll leave it there. This is an argument that has many, many facets. Adrian in Cliftonwood, thank you very much for joining me this morning. And George in Bishopston, uh, thank you for your say as well. Most grateful to you thank both. You Have a good day. Well.